Hey guys, so in this video I'm, I'm well, v virtually I'm going to show you a little bit about my personal programming setup and a few of my snippets and the plugins that I use as a part of a request I actually got from a viewer which was very flattering. I was, yeah, he just asked me basically, okay, what, what setup are you using? And I thought, hey, if if he wants to know, if you know, if you guys want, want to know, then this would be a perfect opportunity for me to show you some of my, you know, the way that I work basically. All right, let's get into it. So let's look at the extensions first and then I'll show you some of my snippets and basically just walk you through the way that I think about these things. So here are my snippets and the way that I think about snippets and so forth is that I identify the bare minimum things that I use almost all the time, like this 80-20% uh, 80, 80, rule guys. Like what am I using 80% of the time and then I just stick with that. Now. The first plugin here is just language extensions for uh, for a, a syntax that's called Gherkin, which I'm not going to cover in this video because I'm working on another video where this will make more sense. Hopefully you'll you know find that useful. But this is one of my absolute favorite ones. It's probably the most important. I, I, I cannot live without ESLint. I, or rather, if, if, if there is a world without ESLint, I don't want to be part of it. This is the best JavaScript hell a tool there is like it's really 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 amazing it will give you everything from formatting help to telling you if you're doing something dangerous if you're forgetting a reference it's the best next the, it's the next best thing to having a compiler guys I urge you if you do serious JavaScript use ESLint please then we have another syntax for JSX so that you know that the VS Code basically can handle JSX because JSX is actually a, like a kind of in-between thing between JavaScript and HTML. Then we have NPM IntelliSense. This is an absolutely amazing plugin which looks at your package JSON file or basically all the dependencies you have in your project and if you want to require them they it gives you a bit of content assist as you can see here in the nice GIF they made. And then we have Path IntelliSense, which is also amazing, which will basically, when you're doing a relative import in a require an import or something like that, it will give you a small list of all the files that is in that directory. I'll show you this in a moment. Then we have the second, my second favorite JavaScript specific plugin, which is Prettier. This is an absolutely amazing formatter of code, which works with ESLint. So ESLint is the way that you declare the rules for how you want your code to be formatted. And then Prettier will do the formatting for you. So you don't have to like manually go and fix all of the spelling, like not, not spelling necessarily, but syntax issues and stuff like that. So I have this on on save so whenever I save my code this runs and just formats everything for me it's absolutely amazing then we have sublime text key map which is like I used to work with sublime text before I started using visual studio code so all of my muscle memory is for sublime text so this basically just helps me get back you know it maps everything so that it uses the same type of key mappings that's as sublime does then we have SVG Viewer. This is a very useful one, which you know, when I do SVG work, it's very nice to be able to view the SVG, as you can see here, inside of VS Code. That helps a lot, so I don't have to switch between like some other tool and like the code, because you know, when I'm editing an SVG, I want to see exactly what happens, preferably as quickly as possible. And then to get all my nice shiny icons, I use VS Code icons, which is basically where I get most of these little icons next to my files. And those are basically my plugins. I don't use much in terms of uh, rather my extensions. I don't use all that many extensions because a lot of the stuff that I really need is already built into Visual Studio Code. Like it's a really, really good tool. I have to admit I, that's why I've switched from Sublime to this. So now we can talk a bit about my snippets. So the first, like uh, what I do is that I bind the Q key to my snippet system. So whenever I hit the Q key, as you can see here, I get all of the snippets that I have defined and then I can just start defining them. So let's say that we wanted to create a very basic test case. So let's let's do a require first. Q require or rec, it's going to hit immediately. And then we will import the foo module and do that. As you can see here now, it's actually telling me that 
the the foo file is a part of like my you know it's part it's part of my directory basically and which which is you know which is absolutely amazing that's exactly what path intelligence is supposed to be doing so now i can just auto populate that i, I really i really like that that's a that's a big big one for me then we do a describe because we are just people so let's do yeah, it tests the foo module and something like that and then we do a queue it it has a module queue okay or queue defined expect foo to be defined and now we'll talk about one of my the I, I only have one short command which is command zero which opens up the Visual Studio Code terminal so now from the terminal I can just run just in my project and I see that hey my test passes which is absolutely amazing then we do another describe returns foo queue it returns foo actually this is not that descriptive foo dot foo test let's call it that and let's take a equals I define an equals we'll walk through all of these snippets in just a moment so I expect my foo function to return foo and let's do foo dot foo like that that's all it's gonna do we run our test and here we can see that it's gonna fail because foo dot foo is not a function which is expected let's switch over to foo and let's define something so qnf or nfn for me is named function so let's call that foo and we don't want any parameters let's return foo it's easy peasy me is module export so it's expanding to m to module exports basically and then we do this like that and if we now run this ta -da, all of this is working so this is basically the way that i kind of that this is like me just working this is how i do my every, everyday job that's like i define the snippets that i use the most and i just hide them behind behind the q key so that i can very quickly get like Say I want to fail, like if I just want to fail for whatever reason. My absolute favorite one is QLog, which is just going to expand to two logs with a, like that. This is this is probably the most used one that I have. But let's actually you take a look at my setup in terms of like yes, just, just start with the settings. User settings, yes, let's use the user settings. So here we see that I use a font size of 14, tab size 2. Source Code Pro is my font family of choice. It's a font that you can download for free from Adobe. They have a repository and it's actually supposed to, like, I, I really like it, that's the font that I use. And I use Monokai Dim, sometimes I use Solarized as well. And these other ones here are basically just uh, for it's th these are for the most part just plugin specific. This one is pretty important format on save, which will run basically run ESLint whenever I hit command S, which is for me it's perfect. And yeah, the that that's basically my setup in terms of like settings. Let's take a look at let's do commands let's see user uh, sure no one like it's actually short open keyboard shortcuts yeah here we are so I really only have two custom ones and this one is only custom because it overrides this one here so command zero if I hit that it's just gonna open up this like the Visual Studio terminal, which is, I think that's kind of nice. I'm not much of a hotkey guy in general. And finally, let's look at the snippets. Uh, user snippet for JavaScript because I mostly work in JavaScript. So what I I have one for requiring things, 
um, my name function one. So these templates I just define, and I kind of I'm not saying that you should use all of these. Some of them maybe uh, maybe some of this is going to be a little bit inspiring to you, and you kind of get a feel for it. okay, yeah, I probably need these as well. These are just things that I personally use quite a lot, and I can only urge you to really use snippets. They make things so much easier for you. You can get much like a, like really really productive for really large projects like when I was working at Ticketmaster I had snippets that would generate an entire file like an, a, a template file basically and what I usually do when I have defined like my own snippets that I need is that I create a personal project so in this case my per project is called FC config and all I do is on GitHub, so if you want to go and check it out, you can, you know, be feel free to. And here I basically just store all of my configuration files for the different editors that I use. So Visual Code, uh, Visual Studio Code has three, and you know my shell has one config file, and Vim has one as well. So those are basically my tips. These are, and this is like uh, this is literally how I have my environment set up and how I basically do my work every single day. Hopefully this was useful to you. Have a great day.